I'm going to start going over the performance editor. I'm, gonna, I'm going to make individual videos for each one of these subgroups. Starting at the top, we can choose our um, bank by in the in the KDF file by hitting this little arrow right here. So if I like opened up a different bank to like see what was in there, um, I could easily just highlight that the bank that I'm working in in the performance by just clicking this button. You can see I just jumped back to A. Um, let me actually see if I were to scroll down and choose something like way down here. I don't have to double click it, I can just single click it. And then I choose bank, will it scroll up automatically? Yes, it will, which is really nice. Um, I could choose the bank by this drop down menu as well. And then once I choose a bank, I can show everything in that bank right here. These are all the preset, presets that are in that bank. Of course, I can have the window pop up from the KDF file, uh, which is its own floating window by hitting this little arrow right here. Um, and likewise, you know, the up and down arrows do exactly what you suspect, where it can increment and decrement to the next preset. I can store um, a file, as in save it to memory, with the store button. And I'll just rename this, because this little convenient little dialog pops up. I'll just call it a 10 module setup, which is what I had it named before. And then it, I can choose where I want it saved. Uh, it works the same way as these drop down menus here. And um, it's by default chooses the location that you're working in. Of course, I mean, convenient. You could also give it a little tag, which is pretty neat. Um, I could tag it like uh, maybe yellow, maybe if yellow might mean education to me or something like that. Um, then I can just click yes. Operate performance initial combi. You cannot undo this operation. Yeah, do it. Cool. So now I get this little. Uh, little coloration here just for that um, just for that preset and then um, you'll notice that even though I stored the performance like that's I saved a performance in the KDF file but I haven't saved the KDF file in its entirety because you can see this little asterisk right here anytime an asterisk pops up it means that something is different from how the computer remembers that thing being saved in originally. So basically, if I change a parameter, it will reference what state that parameter was in in the in it in the save file. And if it's if the two things are different, then it'll be like, oh, asterisk, something's changed. Anyway, I just hit control S to get rid of that asterisk. Um, but yeah, that concept of layering, I'll get into a little bit more uh, a little bit later. So um, you can choose the amount of modules you want. Uh, it's actually kind of pointless for it to even offer two and three module performances, um, because right now I'm in a combi and I can only choose um, either six, five, or four, four modules, four being the minimum amount, six being the maximum. I can't choose one because obviously combis um, in the Kronos just automatically have four modules. Um, likewise, in individual programs you can only choose one you can't choose two three four five or six that means you'll actually never be able to choose two or three and that's just an artifact from um the software being kind of like a rehashed version of of uh maybe not rehashed but it's like whether you are buying the chrono software or the original karma workstation software they're all like the same software just with minor tweaks and i guess something like getting rid of being able to, to you know, choose some extra, uh, some options that you actually can never choose. I guess that, that programming is just like tedious and unnecessary. Um, it's definitely not something that bothers me. So, uh, the time signature parameter. So in the performance editor, any changes that you make will take priority over the GE. So right now I have the time signature based off of the GE time signature, G E T S. And in the phase group of the GE, you can um, actually choose uh, uh, with the length mode, you can choose like a time signature for the GE. I mean, the, the details of this I'll get into, but um, for now, just know that I can choose GE time signature on, on its own. But then I can also force that GE into a different time signature, like 3, 4, or something like that. Um, also notice that uh, we have this little asterisk. So I'm going to get more into this the save structure right now. We, we have this little asterisk pop up because I changed something in the GE. And so it's like, hey, you know, one of these parameters 
is changed from it, its original save state, um, you need to know that. Even though these other uh, these other modules are referencing the same GE zero ARP, um, they don't have an asterisk, and that's because I never saved this GE. I never rewrote the GE into the save file. If I were to, actually, all of these would would change immediately. But right now, the buffer, this co whole concept of a buffer is pretty important. Um, it's just changed in the buffer. So just for this ind individual GE in this module, uh, we have a different state, whereas these are still referencing the original save state. Um, again, if I were to save this with the new settings, then these would all mirror them since these are all the same GE. If I don't want to save it and I want to get rid of the asterisk, I can just simply do an increment and then decrement, and then you see the asterisk goes away. It's it's the exact same as working in the Chronos. Like let, Let's say that you have a preset in the Chronos and then you changed it, but you don't want to save it. You can just flip over to another preset, then flip back, and then the preset will be recalled as it was saved, as it was in its um, original save state. Um, so uh, moving on, let's go to uh, this, this little box right here. So I can choose which module I'm working on, and that chooses the module in the GE. So like when I'm changing GE parameters, I um, it's based off of you know the the module that that GE is loaded into. Um, so by choosing this, uh, by just clicking these little things, you can see that it chooses that that module, and that's mirrored between these two windows. I can also choose to run, and you can see how that's mirrored down here. Um, I like that there is a lot of mirroring going on in the software, um, including with the real-time controls, as we've as I've displayed in all of the previous videos. Um, Solo works the same way. Um, and then um, I guess I should talk a little bit about what these do. Uh, run obviously turns the module on or off. It's kind of like a mute or unmute. And then Solo is just as you'd expect. It's just like soloing a track, except obviously we're only working with MIDI data when it comes to Karma. Um, and then um, let's see can't play the piano, which is too bad. Maybe if you had a, this, your setup slightly different, then maybe you could actually click and drag and it would actually play notes. But um, with how I have my thing set up, I unfortunately can't do that. Um, uh, let's see what else. So I only want to f uh, focus on this GE setup window for now. Um, and let me just run through the rest of these parameters. So we have a uh, six module performance. We're using all six modules. I think I've discussed this before, but you can uh, rename a module or you can't actually rename it, but you can choose a different name from a drop down list of a bunch of different names. Um, as I've gone over before, that name is reflected in our drop down menu here. So if like for module one, if I decided to call it um, nay, <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> If I decided to call it nay, then in this drop down menu, you'd see module one nay. Um, and then, uh, of course, I can just choose module one, the default name, module one. Bank chooses the uh, GE bank that you want to choose your GE from. So that's the same thing as if I were to scroll down in the KDF file and I see all my banks down here. Um, also, uh, like let's say that I choose bank four and then I wanted to choose number 55 pods in the pad, um, it would choose that GE for the module that we have selected here. So um, I guess I'll choose pods in the pad or whatever. I could choose any one, pad helper 13. So you can see that it shows pad helper 13 here. If I were to choose a different module, like module 5, and then I clicked a different one, square snaps, then it would choose square snaps for that one. Um, didn't quite X that out. There we go. I can, uh, of course, choose the bank here instead. If I wanted to just choose that from the drop-down menu, and I could choose the, the default one of ARP of the first GE zero ARP. Um, and then I can transpose the MIDI data. So that's the uh, the MIDI data coming out of the, the module. I believe it's the MIDI data coming out of the module and not going into the module. 
Um, you would think that those would essentially be the same thing, but not necessarily. Um, you know, if you're playing like, huh, well, I can't think of an instance necessarily offhand, but like you could have a GE function off of the, uh, the lowest note in a chord. Like if it's, if it's mono, if I chose to like force mono, like if I click this little box, um, then it would only function off of, I believe the bottom note in a chord, but, um, I guess that wouldn't necessarily matter as far as transpose goes because uh, I would still just be tr if well. Let me think about this. So if MIDI is going in, and then I'm transposing it like a chord is going in, but it's in force mono, and I'm transposing it up and down, then it's changing that bottom note. So that would be pre GE. What if it's post GE, and a chord is going in, and then I'm transposing it up and down. I guess the result would be the same. I feel like if I tried hard enough, I could probably think of an example um, where I could test to find out if this is pre or post GE. But for now, I'm going to assume that it's post. But again, that would take it would take more experimentation for me to find out for sure. Um, the run and solo buttons we kind of already went over. Uh, link to drum track. Basically, uh, if you hit link to drum track, the module won't do anything. In fact, let me um, just turn latch on and then play something. Um, and we're not hearing sound. I don't know exactly why, but I don't need sound right now, so it doesn't matter. Um, uh, if I... Oh, you know why? I bet I don't have sound because... Um, yeah, I'm not routed to the ground. Sorry about that. Um, I'm not sure exactly why this this is saved on a performance level. So I think when I initialized it, uh, it might have changed my ports. But uh, anyway, I want the MIDI coming in from Cubase, and then um, and then uh, yeah, I want them all going to the sound, and then I, I want it usually to start at six. Might as well just save this. Why not? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Cool. So now this is set up correctly. And then I can store that. Yes. I'm gonna hit Control S. And then we're good. Awesome. I should actually probably do a different tutorial on the MIDI setup window sometime, but for now we're chilling. So um what was I trying to demonstrate? I was saying that oh yeah, link to drum track. So if I have this link to drum track and then I have karma on and then I hit latch and then I hit a, a note, it actually shouldn't do anything. Yep. It won't do anything because the drum track is not the, the, the drum track button is not on, but now, and then of course, when I turn off the drum track, this module turns off. So that's just what the link to drum track button does. Cool. I think I've gone over every single parameter. Um, excellent. I'll see you in the next video.